Hey guys, this is George. I'm going to go over another great feature of George's budget for Excel. And I'm going to cover how to split a transaction into multiple different categories. So this is an example of a checking account, but you can split transactions in a credit card account, a savings account, or any other type of financial transaction that you're dealing with. So this is an example of a new account. So the first transaction here was an example of a beginning balance transaction of $3,000. And I assigned that to the not categorized category. And below that, we have an example of a split transaction into multiple income categories. So on January 4th, we got our paycheck. The net amount that we deposited into the bank was $2,000. And we're going to split that into two different categories in this example. The first one is a salary category, and that's in the amount of $1,500. And the second one is the bonus category, and that was for the amount of $500. So we split our paycheck into those two different categories. Over to the right here in the split group column, there's a running number that's automatically assigned to the split groups in each account. So this is the first split group in this account. So it's given number one. It comprises three different rows. So you can see right here, those three rows are part of one split group. The main split transaction and then the split details. So below that, I've entered several individual expenses. There's a gas station purchase, Macy's, some clothes, maid cleaning service, and Bob's Pizza. Assign that to restaurants and dining. These categories here, you can create your own categories. You can edit them and delete them. And I'll show you where you do that right here in the category list and budget sheet. Here's an example of the bonus category. You can sign budgets for each month for that particular category. So let's go back to our checking account. So let's look at another split transaction of a purchase at Costco for $400. And it was split into three different categories. Over to the right here, because that's the second split group in this account, it's assigned group number two. So we spent $400. The first split group is for groceries for us for $200. Then we spent 150 of that, $400 for glasses, and then $50 was spent for pet care. So that's the format you use when you're splitting a transaction. For the main purchase amount, you put split in the category field. And for the separate individual split items, you put split in the rec field and you choose the appropriate category in the category column. So at the end here, we had one more purchase for a gas station in the amount of $100. Now, if you take a look at the running balance here, we started off at that $3,000 balance. And let's see how the running balance handles split transactions. If you look at the paycheck was for $2,000, so our balance went up to $5,000. And then the split details, if you notice the balance, it stayed at $5,000. So it recognizes that each of these transactions here are part of a main split transaction. So it does not add these to the running balance again. Now I like to see all of this information, the main purchase amount and the split details. However, if you want to hide that, you can go into this rec column, uncheck split, and it's going to hide the split transaction details. If you look here, it's just showing you the total paycheck deposit amount. And over for the Costco amount, you'll see it's the total amount of $400. And over here, you'll see split group number one and split group number two. Now to show all of the rows again, you go over here where it says clear all filters and just click that and you'll see all the transactions again. So let's say you got paid again in the exact same amount. So you can just take this item right here, copy it, come down here, you're going to right click, pay special values. And if you notice this column, split group column, it automatically assigns split group number three to that. So the last thing I would do is I would just change the date to the date of that deposit. And I'm just going to copy down those two dates because all the dates have to match in a split group. You can see here in this register how amazing it is to be able to split a transaction into multiple categories. You can easily identify those three different split groups by looking over here into that split group column.
Now, I want to quickly mention when it comes to reconciliation and split groups, how to do that. Up top here, we have some reconciliation information. We have nine outstanding transactions. Register balance is 6,000. That's the last item here in this running balance. And total clear is zero because it's a new account. We have not reconciled anything. So let's say that we're starting to do our reconciliation and we're looking at our statement and we see a purchase on there for $400 and we make sure that that's in our register. So if that's been cleared on our bank, we can check here, reconcile, and on the cleared column to the right, you'll also know that it'll go from an exclamation point to a green check mark. Up top here, you'll now have eight items instead of nine. And the total cleared was that one item right there that we just marked as clear. So you don't have to mark each of these split item transactions you only have to mark the main split item, which was the actual amount of the purchase of $400, and put an R next to it. So it's really easy to reconcile a split group transaction. So one other thing I did want to mention with regard to splitting an item, this purchase here at Costco was $400. $200 went to groceries, $150 went to glasses. Let's say that the pet care, I'm going to change that to from 50 to zero. Notice it's going to tell you that the split itemization is off by $50, which I just changed to zero. So it's going to tell you how much you need to reconcile to the $400. So I know that I still need $50 in order to get this to balance. So I know that I, that's the amount that I spent on pet care. So I'll just go ahead and enter that. So that's a great feature to help you keep your account properly balanced. Now these green and red indicator lights here, the green ones, mean that it's a positive number. The red ones mean that it's a negative number. So that's a great feature because it allows you to easily see your inflows, for example, this paycheck, and your outflows, for example, this purchase at Costco. They're all in red. So that's an overview of how you split transactions into multiple categories in Georgia's budget for Excel.